Welcome back to Why Chats, a podcast for young people by young people. I'm Alana and I am so excited for today's guest. You guys have no idea what an incredible person this is. She's so passionate, so inspiring. Uh, So six years ago, after discovering sexual predators had stolen her photos from social media and edited them into pornographic images, Noelle Martin bravely spoke out about her experience and still continues to even though the abuse has escalated since then. Her activism has led to new laws that criminalise image-based sexual abuse across Australia. No one anywhere has, anywhere in the whole world has campaigned the way that she has and she's been interviewed globally and taken this fight across the world. Um, Even earlier this year, after everything she's done, Noelle was awarded the 2019 WA Young Australian of the Year. So she is incredible. So Noelle... Thank you so much for taking the time to have a chat to me today. Thank you so much. Thank you for the lovely introduction. That was beautiful. (laughs) Girl, you you. are beautiful. So let's get straight into it. So when you were 18, you discovered that your images had been stolen. So can you tell me exactly how that happened? Yes. So um, I was 18 and I had discovered um, Google Image Reverse Search. Mm it's, it lets you upload an image and it shows you where it is on the internet um, on this Google function. And I tried it out of pure curiosity. I mean, who hasn't Googled that exactly. name before? One, one night um, and like never in my wildest dreams did I think I would see what I saw. And what I saw um, were dozens upon dozens, upon dozens of pornographic sites with images of me um, on them, um, identifiable information about me, where I lived, what I studied, what I um, what I did, how old I was oh um, on these sites and horrific commentary about me too. So, um, you know, comments about the way I looked or, um, you know, sexual graphic um insults. I mean, it was horrific. And these had been in existence for a long time. Oh my God. Like when you saw that, how did you like feel? How did you deal with that? Like, I can't imagine as an 18 year old finding those things about yourself and just like coping with that. Right. (laughs) I, um, I didn't know what I was seeing at first. I was Mm -hmm. so shocked and so, um, I just had no idea what was going on um, because I I never knew that people did this to people um, and, like, I didn't actually – I just had no idea, like, what was going on. I don't know who was targeting me or why they were targeting me. I just had no idea. And, um, and I, like, the more I looked at what was happening to try and, f- you know, put the pieces together, mm-hmm. the more I would discover about – um, you know what they were, what they were exactly doing to my images, um, and you know what was actually really happening. So, after you found all these images, what happened? Like, what changed for you to say, "Oh my God, how is this happening?" To okay, I'm going to fight this. Right. Um, it took a very, very long time for me to reach a point of. Uh, wanting to speak out about what was happening mm-hmm. because um, in the beginning um, when I first found out about what was happening, there were no specific laws at the time in the state I was in. Um, I don't even believe there was a term um, in existence that was used to describe the abuse that I was experiencing Um or at least I didn't know what the term was. Um, I never, I never heard about this this issue, and I never saw it in the media. So I just had no idea. And um, because there were no specific laws, police couldn't help. Um, government agencies couldn't help. Um, you know, I just had no form of recourse. Mm-hmm. Um, and what ended up happening was. I had to go down the route of getting all these images removed um, and the more I would try and get the images removed, 
um, the more graphic they would become. And, you know, they ended up doctoring images of me um, and, you know, posting that on pornographic sites, um, you know, depicting me in all these kinds of positions with with my name on the images too. So, um, So, I mean, every time I would try and get something deleted, um, I would find more sites or there would be um, there would be more graphic material out there or um, it, I mean it just wasn't working no and so it it definitely took years of fighting back and years of um, pain because I knew that um, I was just not in control of the situation and yeah. I had I had absolutely no control whatsoever um, that it reached a point where it just was overwhelming and I I needed um, I needed to stand up because there was no justice and I was not the only one that it was happening to and mm. oh, people really needed to know about this um, and and that was the process of of speaking out. Yeah, because you actually coined the term of what this was, didn't you? Well, or I I um I coined the term morphed porn, which yeah. is which is what was actually used in the Commonwealth Parliament in the hand side for um, the laws at the national level, um, because there was no term to um, to to describe. The, the doctoring of images that I knew of. So mm. I created this term from from the, some of the sites that I visited um, and I just, they were called, um, one of the sites had a thread that was called Morphs, which was um, which is a thread dedicated, um, dedicated to people who would post images of ordinary women, um, call upon other people to morph them. Oh, my God. And um, and other people would morph them and post those images um, that have turned pornographic and it would be um, almost like a culture of exchanging fake altered images of ordinary women and the thread was called Morphs and I was on that thread. Yeah. And so – like I just call I just called it morphed porn because there was um there was nothing else that I I could find that described what was happening and so yeah it, <laughs> it ended up going to the Commonwealth but yeah oh my god that is just like who would ever imagine that people would do this like yeah. that is just such an insane thing to find not that it just happens in general but like happening to you yeah. So after you started speaking out, like this like whole term, this whole thing came like to the Commonwealth, what happened? Because I know people didn't, not everybody applauded you for doing this. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, it was so difficult and it was probably definite. speaking out was was probably more difficult than actually what was happening to me and what happened to me mm-hmm. um, because um, – especially at the time, which was only three, four, five, well, probably four years ago, three, four years ago when I spoke out publicly, mm-hmm. um, there was I, there was not um, a lot of discussion in the media that that really, I think, captured what this abuse does to people. No. I, I, don't, I don't think there was an understanding um, – when I spoke out of how horrific this is and how damaging this is. Um, and I think there was a lot of victim blaming attitudes at the time. Um, you know, if you if you don't want your in, intimate images shared without consent, don't send them in the first place. You know, if you don't want someone taking images of you from social media and doctoring them into porn without your consent, don't have a social media. Don't post anything onto social media. Oh my god! You know that's <clears throat> some of the feedback. Absolutely, you were getting. absolutely. Literally, everybody in the world has a Facebook page exactly. or an Instagram account, exactly. and you were getting told it's your fault because you had one of those. Absolutely, yes. Um, I mean, I was blamed for literally everything, and I was. I was um, also personally attacked. Like, you know, they went after the way I looked 
um, you know, you're so ugly, who would do this to you? Or, um, you know, you're fat, you're this, you're that. I mean, it was, um, it was, they ripped me. They ripped me apart. And that took such a toll on me. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. They, they, and it was just, it was just the comments after comments after comments. Um, I mean, it was humiliating. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that was the dominant public response at the time when I spoke out. And um, was it men or was it females? Like who were the, who were like the main groups like speaking about you like this? Um, sadly, it was men and women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think what I would hear from women, which was so sad, was, I mean, they, they'd agree that harassing someone is wrong, but they would still, some would still hold there was the view. Still that but, wasn't but, it? But, yeah. yes, but you, sh- you shouldn't have worn this, or what do you expect to happen if you have a public social media? Like, that is such a sad reality for you to uphold yeah. that this is expected if you take part in society as a woman. I mean, that is that was just so um, hurtful to hear that um, from some other women. Um, I mean, it was just very, very hurtful. Yeah, I don't. I, I wouldn't even know how to respond to that. Did you respond to these people? Um, I I was often given advice not to respond. Yeah. Um, because I'm um, it would just be never ending. Oh my Yeah. Were there moments though, like I would have not yeah. been able to hold back <laughs> right. for some of them. Yeah. Um I did, yes. Um I think for the most part I I tried to to keep it in. Yeah. Um because it would just be too much. But there were times where I definitely um stood up for myself. Um and my friends did for sure. And oh, I would, you know, but um, but I think, you know, it's a never ending battle to try and change everyone's minds. Yeah. Um, you just have to, you just have to kind of keep fighting for what you believe in. And I think hopefully people will, people will t- turn their minds to what you're saying. And, um, I mean, that's all you can really hope for. Mm. And I guess like in those situations, it's not like you're just trying to change one person's mind. You're literally trying to change like society's <laughs> right. expectations of what women should and shouldn't right. be, which is probably like a little bit hard to do in the comment thread on like a web page. Right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. So <laughs> you were like when you were like dealing with all of this, what made you keep going? Because this is so much to even go through, to have those hurtful things said about you constantly, to have those images still up on websites. Like why did you keep going? Why didn't you just say, I've had enough, I'm done? Mm. That's a good question. Um, I, I, um, I don't know if I have the answer, um, what what I did throughout the journey was just take it day by day. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, there were times where I where I didn't want to take each day by day. Like I just wanted to hide behind a rock mm-hmm. because I just couldn't escape the fact that this was my life. And this was my life. Um no matter what I did about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, they had literally ripped my name and my identity and stolen it and misappropriated it in the most exploitive, uh, you know, horrific graphic way without my consent. Um, and, you know, I I would forever have this association. Mm-hmm. Even even if I spoke out and even if I reclaimed my name, that would be an association that I um I never consented to. And so, you know, it was it's something that is very hard for me to keep to like to keep going because it's really humiliating. I mean, it's still humiliating to this day, even after um getting awards about it. I mean, it's yeah. still so embarrassing and it's just something that I um, have to, I have to like l- have the right attitude otherwise I will never be able to thrive in this world. I have to view it in a way that is positive otherwise, I mean, I just will be stuck in a rut. But um, 
over time, I think I took it day by day. Um, I just tried to get through each day. I tried to draw upon any inspiration I would get from people who heard my story and, you know, were touched or it helped them. Um, and I I would just try and um, get back to the root of what I was doing, which I think at the end of the day, the one thing um, that sustained me was um, a, a fundamental belief that victims needed justice and what perpetrators were doing w- was wrong um, and we as a society should not be accepting this kind of abuse towards people at all. Mm-hmm. And I think even though it got hard and even though it's still hard and humiliating and I just had to take it day by day, I think really what what kept me going was this unwavering belief yeah. and it could sustain me through through it. Yeah. Um, so it was definitely up and down. I don't know if I have a single answer but it's just, you know, you just do what you can. You just felt yeah. that in your gut. Yeah. That this was <clears throat> what you had to do. Yes. Which is beautiful because so many people would hide under a rock after this happening and you've taken a stand against it. Like that's incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, And even like you just said like you've won awards for it. It's not like the awards stopped this from happening, did they? Like I know you said there's photos of you accepting the awards that were photoshopped. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, do you want to tell us about that? Yes, yes. So, um. Even after speaking out and even after fighting for um, law reform and even after law reform actually occurred in different states, Mm -hmm. um, the abuse has still escalated. Um, Now, I actually don't know the motivations behind why, um, why they have continued to target me because I don't actually know who is responsible and I actually don't know you know what the heck they're doing no um i and, and like you don't have any clue do you because it's you didn't have enemies like a yeah. disgruntled ex-partner no. like some girl in high school who hated you or like nothing like that yeah i i i don't i don't think i have enemies i'm sure people don't like me but i don't i don't believe well, i have an enemy that w- not to this degree. yeah not to God. this degree um so but i can almost infer from um from what I know and what I've learnt as to what what could possibly be going on. Mm-hmm. And what I what I inferred at the time in the beginning was um and I and I really hate to say this, but mm-hmm. it I think, you know, they had fetishized me um at the time. Yeah. You know, bustier women um, amateur women that um, that a lot of the sites in the beginning were dedicated to um, and then it, you know, went a bit more um, mainstream but um, that's what I believe it had started as was um, was almost sexual gratification for, for people, um, you know, who who viewed me and objectified me as, as their, you know, fetish. Yeah. And then... Um, and then I think when I started speaking out, it was almost like I'm sure they would have been following because yeah. they edited photos of me that had um, that were more recent um, at, over time. And so my my understanding is they 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 probably are doing it to taunt me yeah. or to intimidate me or to silence me because I wasn't shutting up. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I wasn't this vulnerable person who was gonna, not saying anything. Yeah, you weren't going to lay down unless exactly. it happened to you. Exactly, exactly. And so and I, I, my, so they continued to do it over time and there was this one image that you, you were mentioning which yep. was um, me um, holding an award that I had, I had gotten um, uh at a Young Achiever Awards, a nomination award, and I was holding the certificate in my hand against the backdrop of the, the like, signs of, mm-hmm. you know, Channel 7 or Young Just, Achiever yeah. Awards, um, and they ended up cropping 
into the certificate area um, a fake DVD cover of a pornographic film um, that had me featured on it Mm. um, into the certificate area so it looks like I'm holding the pornographic DVD cover that was fake. Um, And then they edited the background, which was you know, free cams. Oh my god! So it looks like I'm I'm yeah, at a like a convention, po- a convention holding something there. So you know, the level of almost disregard is oh. disgusting. That I mean, completely. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, and then you know, obviously they went on to create th- videos, which is <laughs> another level of where this has turned to. Wow. So it really truly escalated since you've spoken out yes so how has this now affected your life and like your relationships with people and things like that because this has sort of become like who you are now like this advocacy so and how does like that affect you um oh it has affected everything about my life Mm. um and I and I don't want it to, which is which is why I'm really trying hard to to li- like live life outside of this. Yeah. But um, at the end of the day, I really do feel um, a, a big responsibility because there there aren't many people um, at the forefront of this issue because I think people understandably are reluctant to talk publicly about it because it risks exposure to the images or the videos that are out there of them. Yeah. And so, I mean, that is the harm is people seeing things that they're not supposed to see. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. Even though it's not you. Exactly. But it exactly. Is you. Exactly. Um, and so I feel such a responsibility because um, I'm in a bit of a unique situation in that, you know, I, I have a background in, in studying law, mm-hmm. you know, and I am able to speak out. Some people are not, you know, they might not be able. They, they have different circumstances where they really cannot um, speak out and I just feel like I that I have to do it. So um, and I know that, you know, when I do speak to people, it's sometimes it's the first time they hear about this or they had yeah. no idea that this was happening or there is someone um, who was a victim who hears my story and they they feel not as alone because um, when I when I was going through it, I had absolutely no one mm-hmm. who I could listen to or or um, or I knew who had gone through the same three things. So I mean, it would have been so comforting for me to have heard that from someone. And if and if um, I can provide that to others. Um, you know, that would be incredible. But, um, you know, it's a constant conflict because I don't want it to define me, but I think it, I think it slightly does. Um, but I also feel like I can't stop because I have such a responsibility. Um, and yeah. How are you finding that balance at the moment then between this being who you are and living a life outside of it? Yeah. Um, it's a struggle, yeah. And I, and you know, as as you as you asked, I mean, it, it's impacted my relationships with family. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's impacted my interpersonal relations, or you know, dating, or everything, um, work um, relations, getting employment. Um, do you bring this up now, like in a job interview, for example? Do you say this is an achievement now, rather than? Don't Google me. Right. <laughs> um, the the way I've gone about job interviews is um, I've I've just been very transparent about what I've done in my CV. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it's brought up, I will address it, but I'm not hiding away from it because yep. this has been a part of my journey and I think it's taught me a lot of skills that, um, I think are useful in the workplace. Um, so I put it down and I'm transparent about it, but, um, you know, I don't necessarily bring it up. Don't open with it. Exactly. Don't yeah. open with it. Um, but yeah, that's something that I really think about because, I mean, it's still quite a taboo topic and it's still very confronting for people. Um, 
that it's you feel like it's a, a a disadvantage for you. Yeah. Yeah. So even how were your like friends and family with you when you decided to speak publicly about this? Because I mean there's quite a lot of like shame that comes along with that type of thing happening. Were they supportive of you coming out or were they yeah. trying to protect you by not speaking? Right. Um, yeah, I I think this is one of the toughest conversations to have because, um, you know, I come from a family that is of Indian heritage. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we're quite a my family's quite Catholic and um, so we're and I think quite conservative yeah that they, they are progressive and they are really um, becoming really really socially aware but I think relatively we're quite conservative and so you know talking about issues that are like this is just not we don't talk about it yeah um and the prospect of someone in the family talking about it publicly, is just also, you know, oh, it oh, so confronting. So for them. confronting. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think they wanted me to speak out at all. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely throughout the process, when I when I spoke out publicly, um, when I kept doing interviews or where I kept, you know, doing certain talks, um, I think. They were reluctant and they did not want me to speak out. Adam, and it came from a place of love yeah. because they just had no idea what would come and what came was horrific um, abuse on top yeah. of what was happening. So, I mean, but I just could not. Like I really could not mm-hmm. um, not do it. You know, I just had to, I had to speak out. Yeah. Um, because Because honestly... If I didn't, who would? Yeah. And I just felt such a responsibility because um, because as I said, like if I didn't do it, who would? People weren't doing it. So I had to I had to do it. Now that you've come forward, have more people started to share their story around this type of thing? Um I believe so. I mm-hmm. believe people have. I think that it's it's talked about a lot. But I think it's talked about a lot still behind the scenes. Yeah. We have a lot of victim advocates um, around the world, especially in the US, mm-hmm. um, who are coming together and, you know, forming a group of, of victim survivors of this kind of abuse, image-based sexual abuse. Um, but I still think there are so many people who are targeted and what the research tells us is one in five Australians have been p- targeted by this kind of abuse. Wow. Um, it's, it's, um, it's not necessarily one in five who have been targeted by someone doctoring their images without consent and, and you know, it, it includes people um, taking images of someone without consent, like recording it without consent or um, threatening to share intimate images or distributing images without consent. So there were a lot of um, a lot of other forms of abuse that this number includes. But I think even still one in five That's is too uh, high. That's it's too disgusting. high. But I, but I almost think that it's um, an underestimate of the issue and the research is actually – pointed to the fact that it, it's probably an underestimate because what what is actually happening is people don't – I don't think people know that it's happening to them. Yeah. And also I think people don't think it could happen to them. Yeah. They can hear about it and they're like, oh, that wouldn't happen to me. I mean I am, I am just an ordinary girl from Perth yeah. and it happened to me on such a mass scale. And I, if I hadn't have Googled myself um, – at the time, I don't actually know when I would have found out. And I and no. I often think, how would I have stumbled across it or would someone have told me? Um, and I think it would have been much later that um, I would have found out, but I would have found out in, in bad circumstances. Yeah. So I think people don't know it's happening to them and people don't think it is. And I, and I really worry about the like how we're going as a society Mm -hmm. yeah so let's talk a little bit about that so 
from your work and your advocacy, you've managed to actually change the law now, haven't you? Well, no, there were a lot of people okay. involved. Right? Oh, no, but you were you were definitely a, I, a factor in it. Right. I, I, I'm I proud that I played my part. Yeah. yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about what changed now? Yes. So currently um, we have specific laws that deal with this issue across Australia. Mm-hmm. In Western Australia we do um, – and nationally we do, and states and territories also have their own specific legislation, which uh, the changes have come in only in the last kind of couple of years. Wow. Two, three years is where the majority of states and nationally these changes have come in. It's mm-hmm. only recent. Um, and it differs between states, you know, um, currently, um, and it differs also at the national level, but essentially um, – It is a criminal offence to distribute intimate images without consent and those intimate images can be altered um, so they they could include fake images that you um, you have distributed um, and and it could also include images and videos. Um, And so people who distribute images, videos, altered or not, that are intimate without consent are committing a criminal offence um, punishable by imprisonment. Um, threatening to distribute it uh, is a criminal offence. Uh, recording intimate images without consent is a criminal offence. And it, and it's specifically created to deal with this specific form of abuse because there have been laws um, in the past that were very, very general, but this, um, these laws were created to, to deal with this and to, um, you know, recognise this particular harm and that, that is what's happening right now. I mean, like, what an incredible result. Like, that has happened now and, I mean, from my perspective, like, about time because... Yeah. It's been happening for years and years now. Um, but from those sort of agencies, what is sort of like some of the messaging that they're they're putting out there in regards to this and in regards to like protecting yourself about from right. this happening? Right. Um, again, that's a really, really good question. So um, in Australia, we have we have these laws in place. We also have um, a government body, um, the e-safety um, commissioner, the office of the e-safety commissioner, um, that um, have powers to to also go after perpetrators um, civilly, civil penalties for perpetrators. So they can fine perpetrators $105,000. They can also fine social media companies who fail to remove intimate material that they, um, the office has flagged them, um, you know, within 48 hours and they can find them um, up to $525,000. Wow. So we have, we have criminal avenues um, for justice. We have, we have civil penalties and we have this um, government body um, with obviously regulatory powers to go after people. Um, and so there are a lot of... Uh, agencies and and people at play um, giving advice or talking about how we um, as a country and as a society and as global citizens um, should be dealing with this or addressing this issue. Um, And I say global citizens intentionally because um, when it comes to matters of the internet, it is so global that... um, you know, only like one country can only do so much to yeah. address this issue. I mean, you cannot have someone in the Netherlands ruining someone's life in Australia mm. and them getting away with it scot free. Oh. And like, ha- there's no justice there. No. So, you know, this is a really huge global issue. Um, and, and so I think some of the, some of the, um, I think some of the comments um, that we hear about trying to deal with this um, I find really, really troubling because 
you often hear about um, the responsibility falling on us as individuals or the victims Mm -hmm. to do this, that or the other to protect themselves. So it's often, you know, we're we're hearing um, get up, like hide your social media, you know, be private, be careful what you post Mm -hmm. um, because what you post can have this and this impact. And I think... But that's still very problematic, isn't it? Yes. Look, and I I feel as if it is so important for everyone to be equipped with the knowledge to make informed decisions about their digital footprint. Mm -hmm. Everyone should be informed. I think there is a real danger in you know, putting putting that burden and onus on us um, to protect ourselves when, I mean, it should be entirely on the perpetrators to stop this. Completely. And I, there is not enough focus on going after the perpetrators. And I think you shift the responsibility away from what the real problem is. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that's what I'm fighting for now because I think that people can talk about everything under the sun to try and protect themselves and a country can, you know, put forth these laws. But at the end of the day, nothing really changes if if people aren't being held accountable and nothing changes if um, there is, um, you know, people across the world are, are getting away with it. Um, and nothing changes if you don't focus on what is really happening, mm-hmm. and that that is not what's happening right now. Yeah, all that that does is pave the path for victim blaming. Yeah, and not holding the perpetrator to be accountable for their own actions. Yes, because at the end of the day, it's their decision to do that. It was never the person posting a photo. Right, that- absolutely, and and it's and it's often done for like to control other people. I mean, it's done in such malicious ways oh. that it's like it's not it's not acceptable. No. Yeah. I just, I honestly just blows my mind the scale to which this is happening. It is ridiculous. Um, I guess that brings me to my next question then. So you've been sort of fighting this fight for a long time now. Do you think that society is ch- like – beliefs and views of these types of issues have changed from like the day that you found these photos of yourself to now like fighting as like a 24 year old yeah um absolutely I I believe that I have seen such a change and it's it's literally palpable um when I first spoke out the dominant public response was victim blaming victim shaming um not understanding why this would be hurtful for me because, you know, supposedly these were fake images. So I don't know, you know, they would say why, I don't know how, why this is actually affecting you. Um, oh my God. Yeah. That's it's your face. That yeah, is, exactly. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, to now, which is a couple of years later, um, I really, that is not tolerated, that kind of attitude, or at least certainly not, that's not the dominant attitude that I I find when I talk about it or I'm doing interviews about it, um, I really find that people have turned their minds to this and people have, um, you know, moved away from victim blaming and people are really understanding how horrific this kind of abuse is because it can be permanent. I mean, it really can have such a a long-lasting effect on someone and it is there's very little one can do to control something like this when it's when it's out of your control yeah so people are really turning their minds and i think it's only happened in the last couple of years um to the point where i really think society's uh, attitudes have changed so much and i and i find it so remarkable um because i have seen and felt what it was like before and what it is like now mm-hmm. and and I just and I really am very proud of how far we have come in such a short period of time um 
especially Australia and especially Western Australia, I mean, we really have made so much progress. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is so great. I mean, you must feel it so much. Do you still get, like, you know, when you first came out and started speaking about it and then the trolls were out with their knives, do you still get as much of that type of abuse now that you're speaking like for years on right um i i don't i don't get as much anymore mm-hmm. um do you attribute that to this sort of shift in society's thinking or yeah for sure i do and i think the role that the laws changed played um, a massive role in doing that and i think just people talking about it played yeah. a massive role and i and i really do attribute it to um to the move in our attitudes in society, yeah. That's great. Um, so if someone is out there listening and something like this has happened and maybe not not necessarily to this scale but, you know, they've had been filmed without consent or they've had videos shared of them or photos shared or anything like that, what advice can you give to these people now? Okay. <laughs> Later yes. question. <laughs> so, so, um, so here's the thing. Um, I I would say that that you're not alone. Um, that there is justice available, and people are working very, very hard. Um, to make sure that you, you know, you, you will see justice, um, to, I would say not to, not to feel ashamed, um, because people who have been victimized by this are not in the wrong, um, in any shape or form, um, and to not let any kind of victim blaming or slut shaming attitudes, um, get to their heart. Um, but, you know, what I will say too is I'm not going to BS victims and survivors because while there is um, justice available and there are avenues for justice, um, there is still a long way to go. Um, and it's it's definitely something that is hard to hear but I think it's important to hear in order for people to, to you know, manage their expectations or manage someone's expectations because um, they, you know, people can tell you there's all this help but they're still not, you mm-hmm. know. And so so what I would say is um, there are a lot of avenues. They might not completely fix the problem but they can do a lot to help um and you know don't feel alone you can overcome this and you can survive and you can thrive mm-hmm. i mean you know you really can thrive and you can get over over this um adversity um and and um it can be done so um not to lose hope and to just to persevere um yeah. yeah, I think that is so powerful. Even just like reminding people that they're not alone. Yeah, like that this does happen and there is help is just like so powerful. So now you've done all these amazing things. What's next oh. for you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, I, I, I just, I think I just did what, what I, what, anyway. Um, <laughs> I, um, what's next for me? Um, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> I really don't. Um, I'm exhausted. I'm tired, um, and I and I know that it is. It's very personal for me, um, so I can't do it. But I will do it for as long as I I can continue to do it. Um, what is next for this issue? I think the next step is um, a global response, mm-hmm. um, because advances in technology has meant that the way that perpetrators can now target people um is just on a whole nother level um because you know as I, as i was explaining earlier um they ended up creating fake videos of me 
down the track um and um and I don't I actually don't believe that they used really sophisticated means to create that but at the end of the day there were fake videos created Mm -hmm. and we know um we know the way technology has advanced um where people can now um be depicted in in videos that are, look really realistic and what I fear is that when perpetrators are now targeting people they're not going to go to to the image form they're going to start off Straight. with videos yeah. and you know what to next I think there needs to be some sort of global response because we are in a, a whole nother um you know level of threat uh, by by this kind of abuse and the way people use the internet to exploit others and control others without their consent. Um, there has to be some sort of um, coordination where where it's where you know countries around the world first of all criminalize this, mm-hmm. which is really already happening. Yeah. But also you know establish government regulators. Um, that help victims um, and that law enforcement um, can work together around the world to hold people accountable, you know, in the same way that they can, they ca- are currently dealing with child exploitation material yeah. or, um, you know, offences like that, um, you know, we should be doing it for this kind of abuse. Um, and o- all I can do is continue to try and fight um for some sort of a global response or at least to to keep speaking out and raising awareness um globally because I think that's the only way to truly deal with this mm-hmm. um and I can do it for as long as I can because I don't want to do it forever yeah so I think that's where we are now yeah that is amazing uh, I just want to say thank you so much for talking to me today the things you've said are just incredible and I I know people listening are going to feel something whether and like I'm sure they know someone this has happened to and this is just going to help connect people to this issue and hopefully change the way people think so thank you so much thank you so much for speaking with me thank you Uh, wonderful love you (laughs) (laughs) thank you um Everyone listening, if I would love to hear what you think about today's episode, uh, you can reach out on YMCAWA's Instagram and Facebook, and I will chat to you all very soon.